Now, I always find it shocking when people do come to the show and the first thing they say is, wow, it's, that was that yeah. really good. No, they're, like they're shocked it would be. Like, you right, know, right, right, going, right. Oh, man, you know, I didn't want to come, but it was really kind of good. <laughs> you get that, I'm sure, too, right? I've always I hated you. I love that one. I've always hated you. I, I hate comedy. But you're, it was good. It was, it, was, it was kind of fun. It was kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was actually, actually pretty good. It was I thought actually, it was actually terrible. pretty good. <laughs> yeah. good. Thank God. Yeah. I thought it fucking blew. So thank you. <laughs> How, how does that work? Were you touring before and then all of a sudden you get a, a, a Vegas residency or? Yeah. How, how, how does that work? Like you've been doing the the, the, the comedy club circuit, the yeah, theater we circuit. Doing, yep, we were doing that. We are doing all that, doing the clubs and colleges. That was my main thing, colleges. I do I do two a day. I do wow. One, literally, I do one in the morning at like a cafeteria. And uh, literally, it was, there was one in a breezeway one time. I said, where's the stage? I said, right there. I said, in the breezeway? And they said, yeah. I said, the fuck? I mean, people like walk to their class and you know, I'm standing there. Hey, here's a doctor you're working about that toy. And whatever the fuck. And, uh, and then at night you do this big, huge auditorium, you know, at, like, you know, in Penn State, right? You're right, in this right. 3,000 seat thing. And then you go, yeah, so it was, it was crazy. The college thing really is what made me uh, get out there and the roots, you know, marketing. And then started slowly getting a little, you know, a little television. Um, I had some at t commercials, which is kind of funny talking about, you were talking about you getting recognized mm -hmm. um, from the podcast. And I used to do these at t commercials, and they were, they were everywhere. They were like the progressive ones now. They're on every eight seconds. Right. And, I, and I used to always see people, I, I hate them too, and I'm, I try to make as many as I can so that at least there's new ones to hate. <laughs> and um, people would come up to me in the mall, like where town I'd be playing at, and they'd say, uh, oh my God, what are you doing, what are you doing in town? I said, I said uh, I'm doing a show. And they said, a show? Like a phone show? And I said, yeah, a fucking phone show. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a comedy yeah. show. They, they only thought that I, I was hacking show. phones. They had no idea that I was a comic. And it was just, it was really weird. There wasn't like a lot of people. Right. Like, I didn't know you were a comedian. I thought you were just a salesperson for AT&T. So it was a whole new world of people that would come in and see shows not knowing that I actually had an, like an act or something. Right. And that was AT&T commercials like in the, what year, like 90s, uh, 90s 2000s? 90s probably, and yeah, when we had a collect call, you know, and our basic audience was prisoners. You know, that's basically <laughs> yeah. what we're talking right. to. And, and literally, I'd say that in the set. I'm like, no, who's, who are we working to prisoners? I mean, but, uh, right, yeah. but I was lucky to have the gig, you know. And then to answer your question, yeah, from that you slowly get into, I got, um, weird how I got to Vegas. I was doing Regis and Kathy Lee of all shows. And it's, you know, nine o'clock in the morning and I do this, I do the show and I did great. And I came off and this, this guy walked over and says, wow, that was tremendous. I've never seen you. And I said, oh, cool. He says, you, you must, you must kill in Vegas. And I said, never played Vegas. And he says, you've never played Vegas. And I said, nope. And he says, what the fuck? You are Vegas. And I said, oh, well, I've never played. And he says, if I book you in Vegas, would you do, would you do it? And I said, of course I'd do it. I'm a whore. I'm a comic. What do you mean when I'll do it? <laughs> so they, uh, the guy came over and said, I'm going to book you. And it was Kathy Lee Gifford's manager. Nice. So they called Bally's and they got me in the club of the, uh, the first time. And then uh, I did literally Friday night. I did really well. It was just a little comedy club. And the guy says, hey, we want to put you in the big theater. And this is, I've never, I mean, Vegas is different than Penn State where there's a whole full of kids screaming and bong jokes and whatever you want. You know, this is Vegas, and it's, you know, a whole different audience. And, I, and he says, we're going to put you in the big rooms, like 3,000 seats. And I was terrified. I mean, literally terrified. And I got there, and it was, you know, booths, which is the killer of comedy. People are sitting in a booth. You want, you want them sitting in chairs. You're in a booth, they're going to fall asleep, and, you know, eating a steak dinner, whatever the fuck they do. So I bombed. I mean, pretty much bombed horribly. Like, I wanted to get out of the business. And um, I did that for a year at Bally's, but in and out bombing every night and uh and then the mgm grand called and said we, you want to move to uh, our room and it was like an intimate 600 it's where david copfield the joke of my show is i used to play the mgm till david copfield had me disappear but um <laughs> literally he did he said i want and then people were like oh that's funny he actually called the newspaper or called me and said why did you say that in the newspaper and i said what he said that i made you disappear i didn't make i said it's a goddamn joke dude you're a, you're a magician so in a sense he made me disappear because he wanted the room you know right, so right. It's, you know copperfield carrot top so i uh, i i stayed there for and it was 10 years 10 years at the mgm but so, were you really bombing? Yeah, but Bally's. Well, no. Or did you think I, I you think were? I think I was, because it's this huge room, and I I was so used to this thunderous college kids going crazy. Yeah. And people in Vegas, you know, we just saw a building blow up. We don't really care about your your fucking cowboy boot with a kickstand on it, whatever I, joke I would have. So I was doing better than I thought, but it was not, it was uncomfortable, right. uh, uh, painful uncomfortable. And then I got to the MGM. It's a little better, it's more intimate. But Vegas was still a different audience. I, it took me forever to... to 
to get used to an audience in Vegas. Right. Yeah. Now, David Copperfield was was going into a 600 seat theater. He's still in it now. He's still in it. Really? Yeah, he does 18 shows a day. I, now, I'm not kidding. I even said him, can you can you go for a hike, do something? But why, why do you do five shows a day? He says, why do you do one? I said, because I have a life. I, I, <laughs> one show's enough. Man. Yeah. One yeah. show a day, he every does, day. Yeah, one show a day, every day, Sunday. Have one day off Sunday. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. And then I get a week off every uh, every month so I go to Florida and I have a house there so. cool man how long do you do that for uh, uh, how long have I done that no no yeah, I mean like is there a, a consistent schedule Cause, like, yeah four weeks on one week off four weeks you know, on average if I look my manager has a car payment so I have to I have to keep working I have to keep working and maybe <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. you said you do a lot of TV I said that to George Carlin by the way who got one of my all time you know well, yeah and I it was same room I was I, I was coming in and he was coming out <clears throat> and um, I love this story because it's so weird. He come off stage and I was standing there in the, in the wings and he sees me and he says, uh, "Hey, gay kid." And I said, "Don't." I said, I'm, "I'm starting tomorrow." No, what are you doing here? I said, "I'm starting. I'm just watching. I was trying to steal some of your act." <laughs> and he kind of laughed. He don't steal my shit, kid. It's, you know whatever. And I said, "Um, and when do you start?" I said, "Tomorrow." How many shows do you do? I said, "One." And then I do two on the weekends. He goes, "Why do you do two on the weekends?" And I made that joke. I said, "My manager has a car payment, so I, you know." And he goes, oh, really? Why the fuck do you do two shows? And I, and I why do you, why? And I said, well, I figure if I, if I fuck up the first one, I get a second shot at it. And he got all my face. Never give the audience the fucking upper. Never, ever shut your, cut yourself short. You do your shit and you fucking do the way you do it. They don't like it, fuck them. And he walked off and I was like, well, that went well, you know. <laughs> and um, I looked at his man, I said, I'm gonna go. And he said, no, no, dude, he fucking loves you. Just stay. He wouldn't, even, he wouldn't talk to you like that if he didn't love you. And sure enough, I waited around five minutes. He said, hey, he brought me back in his room. And we didn't talk about anything else. Just just, just life. He didn't talk about that. He just, right. didn't even ask about my comedy. He just said it was a fan. He said, I like that. I like your shit. I, I had a joke. That, he said, I like that shit. How the fuck is a great joke? It was a, it was a, a telephone, paper cups and string telephone. You know, the old cup. Yeah. And I used to do, this is a long time ago, I said, they need a new version, you know, the, the updated version of the stupid paper cups and string, right? This should be one for today's world. And I have a second cup that came out for call waiting. I just have to call you back, I have another call. Hey, yeah, I, I call you back, I'm on the phone. And then I have like three cups, it was conference calling, and then it was, it was a clear cup for caller ID. I know it's you, fucker, I'm looking at you, pick up. You know? And he fucking loved it. He kept saying, that's fucking funny as shit. And I said, thanks, George, thank you. Yeah, George Carlin's it, man. Yeah, yeah. He and for him to, you know, to give you the blessing. Right. You know, so I always, that's how I kind of, going back to what you said earlier about people always <laughs> shitting on me, is... Um, right. At the end of the day, when they do or someone does, I always think to those moments, you know what I mean? Some guy right. in, his, in his attic in Nebraska saying, I fucking suck. And then you got George Carlin saying, you're a funny fucker. So right. That's how, you keep, that's how you keep your sanity. It's called Steve-O's Hot Sauce for Your Butthole. And if you go on Amazon and type in Steve-O's Hot Sauce for Your Butthole and order yourself a bottle, you'd be really helping me. Because right now we're ranked number 30 on all of Amazon. And if you buy a bottle, we might go up the ladder, and that would mean a lot. So please, get on Amazon and buy Stevo's hot sauce for your butthole. Yeah. Yeah, dude.